Hiya folks, let's start stripping the bits down for Sharon's lawnmower and get them all cleaned up. See you in a minute. Right, it's about time I've done a bit on Sharon's lawnmower. I can't do anything on the Triumph for claim at the moment. I'm waiting for parts to come, although I have got the wheel bearings that have turned up. And also, I'd just like to thank one of my subscribers who sent me some fuel hose, which is ideal for the lawnmowers. So thank you very much indeed for that. And as you can see, here are the wheel bearings. I've got two sets. I'm going to do both. I'm going to do the front both front wheels as I'm stripping them down. So uh, here they are. And as you can see, look like a new old stock actually. Look at that, you get the old Castrol LM grease. LM, believe it or not, is high mountain point. <laughs> Low mountain point, I would have thought that would have meant, but there you go. So I've got that, got the wheel bearings there, as you can see, and also the oil seal and dust cover as well, which is fantastic. I've measured them with the vernier against the old ones. Here's the old bearing case there. They're exactly the same. So ideally, I'd love to have pressed these in, but um, I'll obviously use this to drift the new one in with the old race, basically. So that's what I'm going to hopefully do with that. As I say, ideally, I'd love to have a press to be able to press them in, but I haven't got one. You've got to make do with what you've got at the end of the day. So that's that. And I've also got a letter from one of my subscribers as well. Let me read it out to you. This come today. He's got some stickers to go on the Wall of Fame. So let's just pull these out. And uh, this is from, it says, Hi Martin, uh, I found your channel when I was looking to repair my transit van. That was like yours and has now gone to the big scrapyard in the sky. <laughs> Please find enclosed a couple of Bobby Boy stickers I had made for my first attempt at printing my own after watching you. I am still at the craft knife and scissor stage, but might upgrade to a plotter cutter in time. I've enclosed a self-addressed envelope and I'm going to send you a couple as well. So that's from Rob, also known as Bobby Boy. And here's his stickers. I don't think they're too bad. I think he's done a good job. So we've got three there. We've got a little one there, Bobby Boy, which is the nice little one. Uh, Dundee Biker. That's dundeebiker.org. And uh, another one there. So let's whack these up on the uh, Hall of Fame or the Wall of Fame. And little Bobby Boy, I can put him, uh, let's put him there, look, that little one. He can go right in between Roy's the Boy and Chris Reed in the UK for that one. And we'll also put the Dundee Biker one up. I'll keep the other Bobby Boy one. I have got a few doubles for uh, other people as well, so I don't put every single sticker that I'm sent up. That would be a bit pointless, really. So this one we'll put, again, under Chris Reed in the UK. I'll tell you what, I'll start a new line from there, basically. So if I put that there, here we go. Dundeebiker.org. And also Bobby Boy, as you can see there, up on the Wall of Fame. And don't forget, if you want your sticker to appear on the Wall of Fame, just send me your sticker. Email me on uh, YouTube by my About Us page, and we'll get your sticker put up on the Wall of Fame. There you go. So as you may well know, this is Sharon's engine for her custom lawnmower. It's a standard Briggs & Stratton 35 Classic, something like that. So uh, I'm going to need to strip a few bits off of it, because I'm going to... Uh, possibly paint the body of it as well so I'll just take a few things off of it for the moment we'll get the exhaust off we'll get the exhaust guard off we'll take the um, this bracket off there I might even powder coat this bracket I'm not too sure yet we'll see how we go with that a few things to come off it like the uh, switch at the back for the brake and the uh, kill switch so we'll we'll have a go at taking a few bits off I'll probably take the coil off as well and get it down to its bare chassis so let's put you on a bit of time lapse for that and I'll see you in a minute I stand by you when you're falling when the river is calling I said I love you forever We can make it together What goes up must be down There's lots of friendly faces all around And nothing's ever lifting me higher Than a touch of your sweet desire Right, okay, that's got most of it off. I'll zip the uh, cylinder head off as well, because I want to take this bracket off, as I said to you. Let's go diagonals. There we go, that's them all done. So let's get them all out. One, 
As I say, I wanted to get this bracket off anyway, so uh, just see what sort of state the engine's in. I'm probably going to get one of those uh, little scopes that you can uh, look inside the engine through the spark plug. I think that might be a handy tool to have. As I'm refurbishing this, it's worth having a look anyway, so let's just uh, get you a bit nearer. Right, head should come off pretty easy, so we we'll just prise it open. There we go, broke straight away. Off it comes, gaskets come off nice. There is some oil in the bore, and signs of probably being overfilled, but uh, that's not a problem. As you can see there, look. Take the piston down the bore. Yeah, the bore looks in good order, to be honest with you. Very good order, I'd say. No sign of wear whatsoever. That's what amazes me with these little Briggs and Stratton engines. The, uh, the abuse they take, the valves are opening correctly, as you can probably see there. Although while I've got them down, I might take them out and just lap them in anyway. So yeah, I'm happy with that. There's no internal problems with this engine by the looks of it. And at the top there, there's no play on the piston whatsoever. So that's absolutely perfect. While I'm here, I might as well whip the uh, flywheel off as well. So let's get that on reverse. They come off so easy with these guns. Absolutely fantastic tools. Right, let's lift that off, put that over there. Now, where's my air hammer? Got my air hammer here. I've just got to change the uh, bit over for that, for the pointed one. And you don't have to unscrew these like I showed you in the, my review video. You can just lean them over and then you can pull them out like that, as you can probably see there. So again, just pull it across and drop the new one in. There we go. That's simple. There we go. Down there like that. Lift that off. Be careful I don't drop the uh, Woodruff key out of there. Those are the things that shear if you hit something and that then throws the timing out, even if that's a little bit off. Then uh, they're made out of aluminium then and they're designed to fail to stop damage to the engine. So just be careful. If you've got one that kicks back when you try to pull it over or you find it very hard to start and you've hit something, check your little wood rough key. There, I'm going to put that up on the shelf for safekeeping. Right, we're getting down now. I don't think I've actually drawn, drained the oil out of this yet. So before I take it outside and give it a good clean, I'm going to drain the oil, wash it all down and uh, prepare it for painting. Okay, that's a lot cleaner now. I did put the head back on just to uh, stop any crap going in the, uh, the balls. Do I have the glasses on me? Where did I put them? Oh, there. <laughs> keep them up there, I always keep. I like to keep stuff in order, as you probably well know. Anyway, so that's most of that off now. Um, I will take the head off again because I'm gonna probably sandblast the head. So I'll just quickly whip that off again. Again, I didn't put that on top. I just uh, loosely put it on. Didn't talk it up or anything. I'm not gonna strip the engine down any further than this because as I say, it, it looks absolutely perfect. There's no need for me to look on the inside of it. So we'll just uh, go with it. Did I leave one in? Yes, of course I did. It would have fell off otherwise, wouldn't it? Right, okay then. So as I say, the, um, the oil we saw in here appears to be it was overfilled you probably saw me draining it out there it was actually overfilled so that's the reason why we've got all this oil residue in the uh, in the bore there so I'm happy with that so turn the engine over there's absolutely no problems with it whatsoever I can see there's, there's not even a line down that bore so 
That just shows you, I don't know, apparently someone recognised this, because I did mention when I started stripping this down, I don't remember buying it. Someone must have gone through my previous videos and said, you bought it two years ago. So <laughs> that's the idea of having the videos there, you can look back. So two years ago I've had this, and it's been sitting in that polytunnel all that time, and as you saw, when we put some fuel in it, it started up, so how about that? And it was probably sold to me as a non-runner. So I did block up all the holes, and... Uh, I can now put this to one side because I'm going to be obviously giving that a slight rub down before I paint it. So I'm not sure what colour exactly I'm going to do that yet. Gold, silver or black, I'm not too sure. Probably leave that to Sharon. So let's put it over there. So I've got loads of bits here that need basically cleaning up, refurbishing, things like this, for example. I'll probably end up powder coating that, I would imagine, although I'm not too sure how that will get on. Oh, the springs come off there. I'm going to need to sort these springs out anyway because they're just hanging on there. I've got a new set of springs. I'll probably treat it to a new set of um, springs to go on there. So I'll just take that off for a minute. Yeah, as I say, that middle thing is riveted on, so I'm not too sure exactly if I will powder coat that. I might end up just painting it. So, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll sandblast it, get it all clean, get all the rust off it and all that, and just uh, paint it, I think. And things like the exhaust, as I normally do, I normally sandblast them. Uh, they come up looking new and then I'll give them a coat of heat temperature paint. Exactly the same with the guard, that'll be done. And also all these ancillary bits, as you can see there, brackets and stuff, and all, all can be cleaned up, de-rusted or whatever. You haven't got to see all that. So I'm going to spend my time sorting this lot out. The next time you see it, you should be putting stuff back together, hopefully. And also, as I said to you, we've got to design the graphics for the lawnmower. We've had a few suggestions, Sharon Stratton. I did tell Sharon that one. She said she wants Martin and Sharon on it, on the uh, recoil cover, so I'll probably end up doing that. Hold on. As, as you can probably see here, on there, that sticker there. So she wants Martin and Sharon put on there. And uh, think of another design to put on there as well. I'll make a couple of stickers up, as I say. But uh, yeah, I think she wanted that silver, if I remember rightly. So again, this has all got to be stripped down. I think the plastic part comes off, if I remember rightly. Pretty sure it does. There's a couple of clips in here somewhere. So they just pull open and that lifts off like that there. There we go. There we go. So I haven't got to de-rivet anything. All I will have to do is to take out the, um, the center spindle there and then that can be sandblasted, powder coated and a presto. The job's going to be a good one. Right. I've got loads here to do, as I say, you don't really want to have to see me prepare all that. It's all about cleaning stuff up now, really, and uh, recoating re stuff up. I'm not too sure about the fuel tank, because the fuel tanks, apparently, I was going to powder coat this. I have powder coated one before, but they've got some sort of resin around the, the top there, around the edge there, and uh, that tends to bubble up in the powder coating oven. So I'm not too sure exactly what I'm going to do with that yet. Um, I may dig the resin out, I'm not sure, and then put new epoxy resin back in again i'm not sure yet we'll play that one by here but uh, obviously the car will need a good oh <laughs> it squirts petrol out obviously <laughs> it's got no petrol in the tank that must have been just a little bit there so there you go that's what i've got to do there the parts apparently that i've ordered for the try for claim i've got the two wheel bearings as you've seen the uh, other parts that are coming apparently or that was a .co.uk website apparently they're coming from germany so they've been uh not dispatched, but they've been gone through. So I don't know how long they're going to take to get here. So that's what's holding me up with that at the moment. Uh, there might be a couple of other things I can do on the try for claim. I might clean the inside out. I might put the lights back on. We'll see anyway. And also Butler's Empire, which I put a lot of behind the scenes stuff on there about this sort of things. So you might see me pop in here one day on Butler's Empire and I'm in between cleaning jobs, like I'm showing you stuff here. I'll show you perhaps what I'll do behind the scenes and stuff like that. Okay, it's been about an hour later now, and I've done a bit of sandblasting, let's show you. As you can see, all these have been now nicely sandblasted. That was the head there, as you can see, that's come up really nice, that, so uh, there's no pitting or whatsoever on that engine whatsoever. This recoil cover, I've got to go over this again, I didn't pull the sticker off properly, and the media blasting cabinet, don't like taking off where stickers have been. And also this top bit here appears to have been powder coated. And as you probably know, media blasting is very, very hard to get off 
uh, powder coating it is really really hard to get off with uh, media blasting so um, that will probably just stay as it is and I'll powder coat over that with uh, the new colour so yeah there we go I'm happy with all this this has all come out really nice so uh, all the nuts and bolts are in soak now so that's in the MC51 and uh, yeah I'm doing pretty well still not sure exactly what colour to do these I mean this for example I might do that gold I'm not too sure I think that look quite nice in gold and I might actually convince Sharon if I can to get this done in gold as well I think that'll look nice gold and uh, that duck egg blue as opposed to the silver but we'll see what she says she who must be obeyed will have the last say anyway I'm gonna go now I'll see you a little bit later <laughs>